Welcome right. back, everyone, to another episode of the Leadership Void Podcast. I'm Enrique with my co-host, Vince, to bring you the best in our veteran, military spouse, and first responder community. And Vince will introduce today's guest. Uh, thanks, Enrique. Today's a very special day. It is June 14th. It is the 248th birthday of the United States Army. So let me hear the hoorah! hoorah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, our guest today is the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army, retired Jack Tilly. He's also the chairman of American Freedom Foundation from Riverview, Florida. So welcome to the show. Tell us a little bit about you. Uh, I, you know, I don't know if you got enough time for me to tell you all about me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I I, uh, I spent 36 years in the service, had uh, 16 trips to Afghanistan, three in Iraq, uh, was fighting in the streets of Saigon when I was 18 years old, uh, overran once, 20 wounded and seven killed. I've suffered from post-traumatic stress for probably 30 or 40 years now. That doesn't mean I'm crazy. It just means that every once in a while I'll say stuff that made me cry a little bit. Uh, in the Pentagon for 9-11, I'm a small business owner. Uh, have three uh, and a half great grandchildren. So I'm a really pumped up kind of guy. And it's the Army's birthday, and I'm so motivated. I love the Army. Absolutely. We love the Army, too. We know that our service is a team effort. We was mentioning that earlier. And yeah. we can do the total mission without each one of those forces. And we wanted to quickly go into your leadership experience. 12th Sergeant Major of the Army. That's not a multiple thing. That's a singular thing. And you led the Army during 9-11, as you mentioned. You were in the Pentagon with one of my dearest of friends and brothers, Make Pond Jim Hurt. And you both served together. And I, I'm really grateful for all that you've done. So let's talk about what pivotal leadership moments did you learn from the most in your evolution in the Army? Or oh, shut up and move up. <laughs> no, I tell you the uh, the thing I I think the thing I learned from uh, being in the military is being user friendly, uh, being a team player, uh, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated, and and I really always just sort of said stayed in my lane. You know, everybody's got a lane of uh, operation, and I didn't worry. I mean, you got to know what's going on the right and left, but but I stay focused. If I was a, a tank commander, a platoon sergeant, a first sergeant. A, company first sergeant of battalion brigade you know whatever level but i stayed focused on my level of responsibility and i always made sure that i was uh, out talking to people seeing what's going on checking the pulse uh find out what's good and bad what issues we had within the organization i think a lot of times on leadership and uh, what happens is uh and it happened a little bit when i was growing up and i used to watch you know you you learn well, I, uh, you learn leadership from a bunch of different things. One is you learn it by just observation, by watching people, what they're doing. And I used to watch uh, senior NCOs when I was growing up that uh, never got out behind their desk, that stayed behind the desk and watch what people are doing. They that really dictate to you more than anything else. And and so what I did was, uh, you know, I'm the kind of guy who wants to roll my sleeves up, get out there. And if it's uh, something's got to be done, let's do it together. Uh, and I want to know what's going on with your uh, your organization or with your unit. So I was just always out talking to people, and and uh, and, I, and really it helped me quite a bit. I, I got to tell you one funny story. The uh, when I was talking to the chief of staff of the army one time, I says, uh, "Sir, I know uh, more about what's going on uh, in the army as far as soldiers than you do." And, oh, sorry, major, no, you don't. No, you don't. Oh, okay, okay, well, okay, sir. You're the chief of staff. I'm almost sergeant major. I got it. About a week later, I was in there. And says sergeant major, what? I may have been wrong about that. You know, I know you do know a lot about what's going on in the army. So I appreciate, <laughs> I appreciate. It. So I mean, you, uh, you know, when you look at the enlisted force, about eighty-one to eighty-three percent is enlisted, uh, a force in all the services. So I mean, you have a tremendous impact. So I don't know if that helps you on the leadership. So I just, I, I just, and the other thing I'll tell you, one last thing I'll try to show up here a little bit. You got to lead by example. You got to show people that you're motivated and you want to get the job done and do the best you can. You know, in, in our profession, not just the Army, but all services, there is no second best. Either you do the good job or you pay with it with your life. So I, I've always thought I'm not playing around. I'm going to be the best at what I'm doing. You know, that was some great leadership moments you shared. You know, definitely leading from the front. It builds and boosts morale. And you are the known factor that definitely implements leadership throughout all the ranks, not only the enlisted and also the officer, but we love what you share, the impact you had and impact you gave. So 
who was very instrumental in, or impacted you while you served in the United States military? Well, I, you know, I think, uh, I think there's somebody at uh, every level I served at. Uh, you know, the uh, the senior NCOs I served with, I can, I can think of a bunch of them. I started Major John Kearns, John Stevens, the chief staff. I mean, there's a, just a lot of people. I tried to really watch everybody. Uh, in fact, my first platoon sergeant, when I was a staff sergeant, Richard Wilson, I'm still in contact with him today. Uh, he lives down in El Paso, Texas, and I call him maybe once or twice a year, and we sort of chit-chat. And if I ever go to El Paso... Uh, you know, I always go and see him and have dinner with him. But but I think you have to reach out and and uh, and talk to everybody. You know, somebody was talking to me uh, one day about who, how many mentors do you have? I think really you probably need to have five or six people that you can reach out, sit down and talk to because each one of them is going to give you a better thought and idea, you know. And, and then the last, probably the last thing, the other thing I'll tell you is, is you have to figure out as a leader how to get information from every level in the military, whether or not it's a private or a general. Everybody's got a good idea. And what you got to do is listen to everybody. I put, uh, I started, I know the Air Force has been doing it for a long time. In fact, I got the idea from the Air Force, to tell you the truth. We started a uh, Sergeant Majors of the Army's conference, uh, nominative conference down in El Paso, Texas. And we put all the senior non-commissioned officers at, at a nominative level in, in one room. And I think the actual number was like 340 or 350 at the not the two star, three star, four, four all, all those guys in there. And uh, one day they were all talking and saying stuff. And somebody said to me, he says, hey, look, Sergeant Major, we ought to cut them off. Don't, you know, they're saying too much. And I said, look, uh, uh, if you want people to, to join your team, you got to allow them to express their opinion, whether or not I believe it or not, or agree with it, I want to hear it. And uh, and so that's what I did. I said, you know, say what you want to say. At the end of the week, though, we would uh, we break down in classes. We come back with the three or four top issues that we had for the army, and we'd break it down to uh, four or three, and we say, guys, this is a top three for us for the United States Army. Now we're all going to buy into these three. Now you may have another 150 behind that, but these top three, no matter what happens, we're going to focus that on focus that uh, on for us as a non-commissioned officer corps. And, and you never guess what they was, you know, pay, quality of life, medical care. I mean, those are the things that really affected the enlisted corps. So yeah, that's, that's, that's really what uh, I really like doing anyway. And I love that collaboration among the senior enlisted, uh, how we collect each other and, and then get behind the mission, the top three, right? The things that really matter to our sailors, our soldiers, our Marines, and, Talking about a little bit of the past, let's talk a little bit about what your thoughts are regarding the future of the U.S. Army. Well, first of all, you're always, you're always going to – it's really funny you say that. The other day I was reading something, and I says, uh, and it talked about how do people learn about the military, and that it's two ways, right? Uh, only 1% of our country serve in the military. So they, they people learn about us by reading books – and by listening to the news, that's how they learn. Okay, uh, you never see active duty service members. You may see them, you know, briefly, but you really see the National Guard or Reserve more than anything else. Uh, so uh, I, I think the military is—it's it, it, what it is today, what it was when I was in there. It may be a little bit different, but I think they're okay. Uh, you know, times change, political leadership changes. Uh, you know, we've got different ideas and different thoughts. So I think the bottom line is they're, they're probably still doing pretty good. Do I like everything they're doing? Probably not. Uh, but I'm not there. I'm here to support them as a retiree, and I will support them. Uh, if they ask my opinion, I'll give it to them. After that, you do what you got to do. Uh, it, it's the same thing. I mean, I'm not going to criticize something that affects your attitude. I mean, if you got a guy like me or or any service that comes online and says, hey, look, I don't like this, or I don't like that, or I don't like this. I, I, what am I doing? I'm not doing anything other than expressing my opinion. My opinion is the military is doing okay. Uh, they're doing fine. They're doing what they have to do right now. Uh, they're securing our country. If they have to fight a war, they'll do fine. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is. You know, don't, don't, 
don't go back and criticize something that you're really not, you're part of, but not really in the bowels of the military anymore. You're off to decide, so I'll say, go, you know, you need to be a cheerleader. You know, go get them. You know, let's just do all this stuff. In fact, somebody asked me one day, says, uh, would you go back and fight anymore? I'm 74 years old. Hell no. I don't want to go fight no more. But I will support him 100%. And if I had to fight, I guess I would fight. But I'm not going to raise my hand. <laughs> Well, from the streets of Saigon to today, he will join the fight. Don't let him scare you and let him fool you there, folks. Love what you shared. Uh, definitely the evolution of, of society and, and the world has really made us change and everything we've done. But you're right. We will meet that cause head on and face on and win. And love to hear from you. What leadership highlights, uh, pearls of wisdom have you had in your time in the military you'd like to share with our audience today? Well, I think uh, I, I think it's really pretty. Uh, can I back up just a little bit? When when you're looking at stuff today, uh, think about 20 years from today. Uh, you know, you, when you start talking about stuff on the streets and all the stuff that's going on with the crime and all that stuff, I tell people think about uh, today, uh, 20 years from today, what it will it, what it'll look like if we don't do something to change those kind of things. And going back to your question is, you, you got to be a team player. Uh, you got to just work with the people that are around you, and 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 and, and you got to be a uh, a good role model for people. See, everybody at a, at every level in the military, especially if they're officer, non commissioned officer, senior non commissioned officer, live in a glass house, and people are always watching what you're doing. And uh, if you're doing something wrong, if you're doing, you know, uh, you're just doing a terrible example of uh you know what you should be doing i, I hopefully i answer your question i i just i just think uh, for me personally uh being user friendly talking to people communicating don't put myself on a, on a pedestal think i'm a little bit better than anybody else uh you know i used to tell people there's a lot of people as good as i am but there's nobody better you know and that's the same way you need to look at everybody else i mean you know just because uh I, I read something the other just because you got a lot of money doesn't make you any smarter than me. You know, uh, I, I, you, you just, life's too short to worry about things that you can't affect. Worry about the things you can fix, you know, in your communities. If you're, if you're, if you're in a community and you're a, a retired veteran or, or even active duty service member, get out and help that community. Just think about all the leadership that we have within our country. I think there's 17 million veterans out there. Just think if they all got involved with those communities and the schools and all that stuff, what kind of leadership and what kind of development could we help, you know, uh, our young kids with? I think we could do a, a tremendous amount. The other thing I think is really important too is, is uh, learn about your country. You know, learn about the things, you know, we can talk about what happened 50 years ago or hundred years ago. But you got to think about today. What's going on today, and what do I need to make better for today? And I think the key to success in anything is being a good communicator and talking to people, uh, being who you are. You ever talk to somebody that looked at the ground versus looked at you? Uh, it drives me crazy. When I look at someone, I look them in the eye and say, "Hey, look, you know, if you got something to say, say it." People used to get mad at me for somebody asked me a question. <laughs> this is sort of maybe it's not a crappy or not, but. I used to tell every commander that I ever had, if you ask me a question, I am obligated to tell you the answer. Now, you may not like the answer, but I'm going to tell you anyway. And what you do after that's up to you. I had a, a, a commander one time. I was in a meeting. First brigade I ever had as a sergeant major, 6,000 plus people. And uh, the commander got to the end. He's being real nice to everybody. He's, he's all patting me on the back, doing all this stuff. And, and he asked me a question. Sergeant major, what do you think about that? Well, I was 180 out from what he wanted me to say. Oh, you could see his face turn red. Oh man, he's just, you know, he's just, he's always grunting and doing all that stuff. And you could tell I affected him. And uh, so at the end of the meeting, everybody say, hey, see you later. I went upstairs to my office, had a little office in there. And about two minutes later, he's in my office. He, he looked me right in the eye. He says, look, Sergeant Major. He said, the next time I put something out there that, uh, th that I need your support, I expect you to support it. And I said, look, sir, <laughs> if you want me to answer a question, ask me something like that before we ever go to the meeting so we can get our thoughts together. Uh, for you to catch me off guard, again, I'm obligated to all those officers and non-commissioned officers to tell the truth as I see it. 
If it's something different than you, well, okay, let's talk about it and come to a happy medium. But uh, I represent the non-commissioned officer corps within my organization. I am not in any way, shape, or form going to say something that's incorrect that affects not just me, but all of us. You know, it's about, uh, it's about you know, I always tell people it's about God, it's about our family, it's about the United States Army, it's about all services, about saying, uh, you know, saying what's right, telling the truth. And obviously the reason why you were the 12th Sergeant of the Army, I tell you, it's wonderful. And as you're talking, I'm, I'm thinking, folks, you got to know your worth and you got to know how you're going to impact those around you. And I love how you ended it with, hey, sometimes you just got to say how it is, but you have a responsibility. And you took that uh, with a heavy uh, heart and mind on it saying, it's not just me, it's everybody. Well, when I was in the Pentagon, not just me, but all the services, we got the best pay raise. I don't know if you remember that or not. I think I want to say, I'm guessing there a little bit, 23, 24% pay raise when, when I was in the Pentagon. And people used to ask me about it. I says, hey, Sergeant Major, thanks a lot for that pay raise. And I, and I used to tell them, I said, I wasn't working on your pay. I was trying to fix mine. But but the fact of the matter is, if you look at it, senior non-commissioned officers were making the same amount as a uh, captain with four or five years in the service, right? What's wrong with that picture? You have senior NCOs that uh, really in all services, not just the Army. I'm talking about the Army now, but but they really depend on their NCO corps to get the job done. I always tell people, officers plan non-commissioned officers execute. Now it's it's sort of overlapping right there a little bit, but uh, you know, you got to do the job. You got to get it done. Again, in our profession, not just the army, in our profession, there is no second best. I don't want to be the second best shot in the world. I want to be the best shot. Absolutely. Now you've shared a lot of tips, a lot of advice for many facets in our service and those in professions that are coming up. So looking at those that are coming in now you talked about hey look at 20 years from now if you don't make any changes today yeah. uh, then don't talk about it but there's some leadership tips that you may be able to give those coming in now that may be listening to this well i think that one thing is is that if you're a young person coming into the service here's some leadership things for you get your education uh make sure you get your education if you can get a two-year degree or four-year degree or whatever and I can go back and say it a million times, you've got to just be a team player, be user friendly. And whatever your profession is, be the best at whatever it is. If you're a tank driver or a infantryman or a space cadet, whatever you want to be, be the best at what you're doing. And, and, and the biggest thing is be a good communicator and a good listener. One of the problems that you have usually in leadership is that uh, people want to transmit you know, want to put information out and it breaks their heart when you start getting information back because you may not like what you're hearing. Uh, you know, I, uh, I, I've had people say things to me before that, that irritated me a little bit, but I thought in my mind, I'd say, you know, that's really what I want. I want you to tell me the truth about what's going on. So be physically fit, mentally tough, uh, make sure that this is, you know, this is not an eight hour job. This is a 24, if you're active duty, you know, it's it's 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. You're 100% bought into what you're doing. And the other thing is, I, I, and I really think this is such a shame, is, is that uh, we don't tell this country enough about the military. We don't tell people about the stories that we have. One of the, and it's, it's probably classified in, probably, probably not now, but one of the awards that I seen when I was leaving the service uh, is to bring a, uh, awards and briefcase in my office every once in a while, depending on what the mission was. And and uh, one uh, Sergeant First Class had, uh, had really uh, eliminated four people, the last one with his hands. And so there's so many things that go on in this country that really the Army doesn't say anything about. They just do their job. And uh, and that's a good thing. I mean, I like doing it because of security and all that other stuff. But, but we need to tell this country a little bit more about... Uh, you know, what we're doing, what kind of sacrifice we're, that we're giving. I gave a speech the other day, I'm getting long winded here again, but I gave a speech the other day and I says, you know something, uh, Americans die each and every day, no matter what, we don't talk about that. But what do they die for? They die so you can have the freedom to say what you want to say. They die so you can have the freedoms to worship any way that you want to worship. They die so you can have dreams and accomplish anything that you want to accomplish in your life. 
you know so that's that's really what america not just army american service members do, do for all of us they allow us to to have those dreams that we want to have to be free the way we want to be free each and every day so it's 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 a big deal but it's it's also sad that uh, more people don't know anything about that i mean if i if i was king for a day what i'd like to do i'd like to put a uh, a, a a TV channel on that everybody has to watch 30 minutes a day that talks about what the military does, what they do for our country each and every day. You know, we listen to politicians all the time about, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Well, <laughs> you know, well, show me the results of what you say you're going to do. You know, I want to see results. In the military, you see results of what they do each and every day. And you talked about freedom, right? What, yeah. what the price for freedom that our men and women have sacrificed, endured, yeah. and yeah. gave their ultimate, you know, their, their selves for. So, yes, 30 minutes, make it an hour a day. Let's talk about those military men and women. But today is all about the 248th birthday on yeah. June 14th. And guess what? We have the 12th Sergeant Major of the Army, retired Jack Tilly, and folks who would like to listen and hear more about him and how to get a hold of him or his what he's doing in the American Freedom Foundation, how do they go about doing so? Well, I, what I'd really like, you know, I, I said a minute ago, there's 17 million veterans out there. I have a show called Your Next Mission. Go to yournextmission.org and see it. You can go on YouTube or anything else. And what we do is we do we put out one show a week uh, and we talk about all sorts of stuff. Uh, VA benefits and entitlements. We talk about uh, mental illness. We bring families on. We talk about whatever we want to talk about as a veteran community, and you can contact me at 844-424-1134 or send me an email at smatilly at yournextmission.org. And, and guess what? I'll either text you back or I'll answer your email. But but it's you're not by yourself. Uh, I, I, I tell people all the time, I am going to do all I can till the day I die to help every veteran, remember I said veteran, it doesn't matter what service you're in, this Army's birthday, I'm proud about that, but every veteran till the day I die uh, with anything I can help them with. And then the last thing I'll tell you is uh, we do have an American Freedom Foundation, which started Your Next Mission podcast, and I'm proud of this. We've given, uh, we've helped about 6,000 people find jobs since we started it, which I think is good. We've given out 11 or $12 million to help our veteran community in different ways, but guess what? If if just a few people, and I would say few, there's probably five or six of us doing that. But just think, if if, if six other people did the same thing, and the same thing, and the same thing, what kind of change we have? Don't sit on your duff and do nothing. Do something. It's the army bird. Here's a. I always say the last thing, but that's a lie. <laughs> Here's a here's a one one more thing I'll tell you right now. On the army's birthday, sing the army song. Wear your hat. Be proud of who you are. And let people know it. Hua. <laughs> Hua. I tell you, there's a lot of excitement, a lot of celebration going on here. I'm about to cut into my cake. <laughs> Celebrating the oh, Army we, birthday. We cut, a, we cut a cake with the chief of staff of Sergeant Major of the Army. Bam! Every year I do it. <laughs> I love it. I love it, folks. And we will have all that information as part of the show notes and video so you can see and know how to get a hold of Sergeant Major of the Army, Tilly, and his organizations. Just like he says, and I'll reverberate that, get off your rump and start doing something. That's the only way we're going to change some things around here. And it's not that anything is wrong. How do you want to see it down the road? How do you want to see that? So thank yeah. you, uh, Sergeant Major uh, Tilly. It's been an honor to have you. And folks, if you want to get a hold of us at the Leadership Void podcast, the Leadership Void at gmail.com is where you'll send that correspondence. If you want to see a specific leadership topic covered in a podcast or a guest, do it by those means and we'll curate that. And Vince and I will make it happen. Hey, if you think I'm fired up right now, come on my show. I'll really be fired up. <laughs> <laughs> Love, we love the enthusiasm, your energy, Sergeant Major. You know, I love everything you said, everything. Your aura is, is phenomenal, it's contagious. But, you know, celebrating the, the 248th birthday of Army with the best person today, why not, right? Uh, Sergeant Major Army Tilly, we are so honored to have you. We're so honored to have our sponsors, VEI, Favob, and Triple Nickel to sponsor the show. But today, 248 years of United States Army, strong. Yes. Yeah!